Hello there. This is Mark Bell from SuperTraining.tv, Super Training Gym, the strongest, where's the camera, the strongest gym in the West. Kind of hard to figure that out. It's like it's here, but it's actually right there. Weird. Answering a question for the Power Project, got a question from Azel D.H. Forst. Frost. Azel D.H. Frost. What the hell's going on with these names? You guys have the weirdest names, I swear. Um, you already know I can't read, and then you try to trick me up even ten times worse with your uh, weird names. Um, okay, here we go. We got a question. He says it burns when he pees. Um, <laughs> actually, that's not what he says. He says when he squats heavier, not even max weights, he gets a sharp pain in his lower abdominal region. Um... He assumes it's the beginning of a hernia. Have you experienced this yourself? Yada, yada, yada. Um, he, he's asking if I think a weightlifting belt would help um, with this uh, injury. Um, okay, here's the deal, man. You got to go to a doctor. You got to go to a doctor. You got to go to a doctor as soon as possible. Um, you got to see what's going on in there. Go to someone you trust. Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly what kind of doctor you'll end up at. Um, e even a local, uh, even your local chiropractor or somebody, a, a local physical therapist or somebody should be able to at least point you in the right direction as to what the hell you should do with this thing. Um, hernias are nothing to mess with. Um, kind of like in that song where the guy says a sprained ankle ain't nothing to play with. Well, hernia is even worse. Hernias um, can be uh, very limiting. Um, and on top of that, they can also become extremely dangerous um, so get yourself to a doctor get that thing checked out if you can handle some light squats and some light um, light deadlifting and stuff um, you know wait wait till you hear from your doctor first you know see what's up see what's going on but uh, if you can't do any squats um, I would recommend that you do like body weight squats sled dragging um, and, uh, you know, th those types of exercises, you're going to have to be really careful. It's going to get more and more limiting is what's going to happen if you uh, try to push it too early or if you, tr or if you uh, injure it any further. I would say that some powerlifting gear uh, may actually help a little bit. But, again, I'd wait till you hear from your doctor to see what's going on there. Um, you might need a surgery or something. You know, you don't, you don't really know. It shouldn't be... Having a burning sensation um, while you're squatting is is, uh, is not normal. So, uh, having said that, you're gonna have to get your ass to a doctor. Um, some powerlifting gear may help, and um, basically referring to powerlifting briefs or a squat suit. Um, this this would be further down the road, maybe in a few weeks, when you figure out exactly what you have going on. So that answers that question. On to the next one from YouTube, the Tech Man. Uh, he said you talk a lot about powerlifting gear, suits and wraps and things like that. But what about um, what about straps and what about shoes? What about straps? What about shoes? What about them? What do you want to know about them? Uh, lifting straps can be very effective. You're going to train your back more, whether you're doing rows or whether you're doing um, uh, deadlifting with straps or shrugs. You're going to work your back, your traps, your lats more with lifting straps because you're taking away one of the major limiting factors to any of those lifts which, which is going to be your chubby little fingers so lifting straps I'm a fan I don't use them personally it's just uh, I never got in the habit of using them but I am a fan of them and I think they can be effective so if you like them go ahead and utilize them you also mentioned that uh, you don't think you'll ever compete in powerlifting um, and so all the more reason to use the straps. Who cares? You know, you're not really overly concerned about your grip. It doesn't sound like. Uh, what type of shoes do you wear? Um, that's very individual. A lot of it has to do with your stance, but I prefer to see my lifters and most of the people that I'm around be in uh, some sort of shoe that has a flat sole rather than an elevated heel. Um, but an elevated heel can be effective for those of you who like to squat really low and like to squat um, with a closer stance. Uh, let's see, is there any other questions you got here? Yeah, you said you wear Olympic shoes. 
because you feel like they help you get depth. That's cool, but make sure you're mob wadding those ankles. Make sure you're doing some mobility work on those ankles, those cankles, those calves, because um, you should not actually need an elevated heel to break parallel. Um, you, you should have enough mobility and flexibility through the hamstrings and through the calves and through the Achilles and all that stuff uh, to be okay. Uh, to not have an elevated heel. Um, okay, last question. Got a question about the reactive training system. Uh, forgive me, Mike Tashir, if I said that wrong, but it's RTS is uh, how he refers to it. Google Mike Tashir. Um, it's T U C H S C H E R E R. Tashirier. Um, Mike Tashir has a training system called the Reactive Training System, and I utilized it for a while, and I liked it. Um, this guy says, uh, you know, he saw my quote on the back of Mike's book. I gave Mike some props for putting together an excellent book. You guys should definitely check it out. Um, he was wondering uh, if I can expand on my experience uh, with the system. Now, here's the deal. I don't currently do the system, and one of the reasons why is because I am a West Side Barbell Disciple, once you're west side, you're always west side, west side for life. Um, I, do west, I do the west side barbell method. So, having said that, I can't blend the two things together. I can blend a little bit of the principles that Mike has, but I can't blend the two together. And that's one of the reasons why his system wasn't overly effective for me. However, I still think I learned a lot from it, and I still think I got stronger from it. Um, Mike is more into repetitions. He trains, actually trains, well, he trains much heavier than me because he's stronger than me, but he trains he trains heavier than me, uh, heavier than I would really like to push my weights. I, I have a certain style. I like to, you know, bounce back and forth between the speed work and the max effort work, um, and I don't go near, I don't use nearly the amount of weights that he does. Like, he did 755 for a set of four the other day, so that's pretty crazy on a deadlift. Um, even if I could do a set of four with 705, um, I wouldn't. I just wouldn't do it. It wouldn't be part of my training regimen. But what I like what that Mike does is Mike uses a rate of perceived effort. I may have said that wrong. It might be something different, but it's called an RPE. Uh, RPE refers to how hard was the lift, how hard was the exercise, and you record that, you write that down. So if you did a bench press and you did a set of three with 315, and the last one was one of those weird grinders where you really had to weasel it around, that would be a 9 or a 10 on the RPE, or the face kill factor, as I like to call it. Uh, the more it kills your face, the worse off it is, and the higher the rating. So... Um, I really like that a lot. It's a principle I still uh, I have taken that and applied it to my own training. I've taken the RPEs and applied it to my own training. Uh, not with the, uh, the precision that Mike does. Mike is a perfectionist and uh, very analytical. He actually uses a Tendo unit for almost his whole entire training session. And he refers back and forth to, to his computer uh, for feedback on what type of force he's producing. That's his style. That's the way he likes to roll. The guy's got, you know, he's totaled over 2,000 pounds a couple times. Uh, raw at 275, so more power to him. He's strong, son of a bitch. His program is clearly working for him. Um, so that rate of force, or I'm sorry, not rate of force development, the RPE is uh, a very effective training method. I'd actually like to see some people utilizing that uh, on their dynamic effort days instead of always just saying, oh, I'll use 50%, 50% plus a band. Um, it doesn't really give me a great idea of like the effort, dynamic effort. Well, what the hell does that mean? You're supposed to lift as fast as possible. Okay, well, is it hard or is it easy? Is it easy to move lightweight around real fast or should it be, like, more difficult? And that's what I like about it and that's why I applied it to my training. So, like, when I do my dynamic effort work, I might only use 60%, 50%, but uh, the, uh, the rate of perceived effort um, that I'm trying to put into the bar is, like, an 8 or a 9. You know, it's, it's difficult. Um, obviously, it's not a 10. A 10 would basically mean that you miss a lift um it's not it's not the uh not the amount of force i'm applying to the bar or anything like that it's just the it's the it's the um it's the the overall the overall effort the feeling of the weight um 
and uh, just how bad it kills your face. Kind of think of it in those terms. But I think that everybody should have a high RPE on their dynamic day. So I know that this kind of stuff gets to be confusing, but it's like it should not, when you're doing your dynamic effort work, it shouldn't be a breeze. You shouldn't be like, all right, well, how many sets? Is that? Oh, okay, it's eight sets. All right, I'm going to do two more sets. Like, you shouldn't even be able to talk. You should be grizzled. You should be like, oh, my God, I don't know how many more sets of this shit I have to do. And you should have to actually suck it up a little bit to do the next set. You should have to dig deep inside, inside here. You should have to dig deep inside to finish out your workout. Not that you're going to miss the weight. I'm not talking about increasing the percentages and having a high intensity and uh, screwing up the intent of the day. I'm talking about training your ass off, and I'm talking about um, having a effort, you know, a good, strong, solid effort, put into that barbell on each and every set, and not having it be easy. Things that are easy are not good for strength, and I'm out of here.